So, hello everybody out there. Uh, we're getting ready to start the webinar and we're going to be starting at 12 o'clock sharp, which is uh, about two minutes from now. So thanks for waiting patiently while we set this up. Uh, we have a, a good program for you this morning and uh, I think those of you who are looking for information about small business programs and loans will be able to get their their questions answered and, and, and learn a little bit more as we as we get into this. So we're just gonna wait for a couple of minutes here and then and then get started. So I hope uh, hope you can hear me well. Um, and uh, everybody who's entering their microphones are muted. So we definitely can't hear you or actually see you. Um, but uh, we're, we're happy that you, you're here. Uh, I've got about one minute to go and I can see on my dashboard here that people are continuing to, to enter the, the webinar. We're going to be using the Q&A tab, which on my screen is at the bottom. I'm not sure how everybody's Zoom is set up, but if you do have questions as we get along this morning, um, be sure to type those in and um, we'll, we'll collect those and work with them probably at the end, unless there's something uh, that needs immediate comment back. But uh, we're going to get started. It is 12 o'clock and um, appreciate you visiting. So welcome. I'm Bill Petrovic and um, I've got a great program lined up for you today. We have um, Rhonda Crouch from the SBA. Also, uh, before we get started, I wanted to say uh, a few words about SCORE. This is a SCORE webinar. Uh, SCORE is a group of volunteers, part of a national organization. Um, we're resource, resource partners for the SBA. And uh, during the pandemic, our office, which has uh, around 80 mentors, uh, we have a subgroup of mentors who are uh, staying focused on uh, topics like we're discussing today. Um, and uh, if you're looking for special mentoring uh, because your business is being affected by the uh, coronavirus pandemic uh, shutdown, um, we can um, match you up with a mentor who is uh, in, into that topic. So today's topic is um, coronavirus relief options. And our speaker, as mentioned, is Rhonda Crouch. And Rhonda is uh, locally here in Indianapolis. She works out of the Indianapolis SBA office. She has been working uh, for the SBA for uh, 28 years. So you might say that she has seen it all, but this is her first pandemic <laughs> as, as all of us. And um, the important thing is that uh, she has a lot of firsthand knowledge. She is on the front lines working daily uh, with the programs that we're about to talk about. Uh, she's on the phones with, with banks and customers and clients and uh, and so she is a first-hand source of knowledge here. This is, is more than just a, a deck of slides with a talking head. Um, we're going to go to 1.30 today and um, first go through the slides and then questions and answers. The Q&A will be by way of 
typed in questions that you will do using your uh, Q&A button on your Zoom page. So um, if you have a, a chat button, ignore it because we are. So whatever, whatever you chat in there will be going into uh, cyberspace, never to be seen by anybody. Um, we are going to post these slides on our website, uh, indianapolis.score.org at the bottom of the homepage. That'll probably occur uh, on Monday. And uh, we are also going to send a copy of the slides to those who have in fact attended this um, webinar. So um, the, the slides are, are a little bit dense. There's a lot of material on each one, uh, but rest assured that you'll have your own copy. So with that, uh, we're gonna get started. Uh, Rhonda, Rhonda's here, she is going to um, take over the screen, the poster slides and walk through them. So Rhonda, I'll, I'll let you do all of the technology wise, uh, see if we can get the, the slides going here. Okay, thank you, Bill. Now let me see if I can share my screen. Oh my gosh, there it is. Fantastic. All right, very <laughs> good, very good. Well, like Bill said, we are going to talk about uh, funding options that are currently available for our small businesses related to the pandemic. Of course, this is such an unusual time. Uh, things that we have never gone through. Like Bill said, I've been with SBA for almost 30 years now, and this is something that we have never faced before, a national disaster. So, um, you know, it, it's unusual times for everybody. But the hope is that some of the things that we talk about today are maybe something that you will find useful, something that can help you to keep your business in business. Uh, okay, I got an alert, Bill, that says uh, you've asked me to start my video. Yeah, your, your camera went off when you started. If, you've, if you could figure out how to do that, great. If not, we'll just keep rolling. Okay, well, I... There you are. You're back. Video. All right, Thank very you. good. Very good. I don't normally use Zoom. In fact, before, you know, the pandemic started, I had never used Zoom. And of course, our agency isn't going to go with the one that everybody else uses. We're going with MS Teams. So I'm trying to learn two different formats here, but we'll, we'll get through it today. But thank you, Bill. All right. So what kind of things do we have as, small, as far as small business economic relief? Well, under the CARES Act, that gave us things like the Paycheck Protection Program, the PPP, um, under our disaster loan program came in the economic injury disaster loan advance and then the SBA debt relief and we're going to go into all of these things in, in more detail here in a minute as Bill said we'll have time at the end to uh, talk about everything in case you have additional questions. Now our regular SBA programs that we have you know every day and non-pandemic times but have been expanded upon our, our economic injury disaster loans or our idle loans, um, our traditional SBA backed loans now includes a new express bridge loan pilot. And then of course we always have our wonderful resource partners like SCORE that help us to do the, the business advising and they have been provided with additional funds from SBA so that they can expand what they're doing to help all of you also. Now, under the CARES Act, again, our Paycheck Protection Program, or the PPP, this is a forgivable loan, and it's basically to help you to keep your employees on payroll. Even if you don't have any work for them to do right now, we're trying to keep, you know, them with your business. We don't want you to have to, to lay off people um, or to lose those great employees because you can't pay them. And also we're hoping to keep people off of unemployment. So that's where the PPP program came in at. Again, this is, you know, to, to help you maintain those employees that you have. I know when I talk to small businesses, a lot of them, that's their, their main problem is retaining, getting and retaining great employees. So the PPP, we hope that you can be able to do that. We don't care if you have work for your employees to do. We don't care if you're working them their regular 40 hours. 
uh, if they're doing their regular job, if they're doing something else, you know, painting the walls or, or whatever, or, or if they're just sitting at home during this time, you're still able to pay them. Like I said, the, the important thing is that you can retain your employees and they can still pull that, that usual pay that they look for. Uh, this is available up to $10 million, depending on your needs. Now, we base it on basically eight weeks worth of whatever your payroll costs are under the, the PPP. And for it to be forgivable, you do have to follow some, some rules and regulations from SBA. But if at least 60% of your loan is used for your payroll costs, then the other part, the other 40% is used for things like your mortgage interest, rent, or utilities, then you can ask for the, the lender to forgive it and SBA will actually pay off the entire loan. You won't owe anything on it. Now the thing is, this is only currently approved through June 30th, so that's next Tuesday. So you need to apply through your either your current lender where your business accounts are, maybe where your personal accounts are, if your business lender, uh, has hit their maximum on the number of loans that they can do with this program. You know, it doesn't matter to us as long as they've been approved to do this, but you do need your application into your lender before June 30th, before Tuesday, or at least certainly by Tuesday morning because the lender has to have it to SBA by 11.59 on Tuesday night. Hey, so Rhonda. Yes, sir. Let me ask you a question about that. Sure. Uh-oh, I'm getting feedback. Um, I, I, just from what I've read in the paper, it seems like some people have reported that they're, um, they, don't, they don't really have a good relationship with any bank, so they go to a bank. And, and is, is the bank allowed to say, sorry, we're just doing this for our good customers? Sure. They, you know, that's, that's their prerogative. And I know with a lot of our national lenders, the big guys, um, they hit a maximum amount of, of loans that they could in-house possibly service and take care of. So they did turn away people. And we found that our smaller community lenders have really stepped up to the plate and they've taken on customers that are not normally you know, their customers or their current clients and, and help them out. So yeah, and, and we have other places like uh, Lending Tree and what are some of the other oddball places that you normally wouldn't go for uh, a loan uh, that are offering loans through their services. They've been approved. And later on in the slides, we'll actually have a, a website that you can go to and, and uh, find a lender and, and check out the list and see if, if a lender that you're thinking about is listed on there. Okay, great. Um, I'm getting a couple people putting comments on the chat, uh, <laughs> um, but uh, try, try to use the Q&A because that's where we're looking for the comments. But okay, thank you. Keep going. Uh -huh. Okay, so the, the PPP, again, uh, make sure you visit the lender. And like I said, you know, later on in the slides, we'll have, actually have the, the uh, web page listed there or a link for where you can go to, to find a lender if your lender isn't currently participating any longer in the PPP loan program. Just remember, Tuesday is the deadline, though, at this time. I have not heard that Congress is going to extend it at this time. It may happen, but right now, today, don't plan on it. So our Economic Injury Disaster Loan Advance, or the IDLE Advance, that is an advance, and it's basically consider it to be a gift or a grant. Uh, and this is $1,000 per employee up to $10,000. You don't have to pay it back. It is part of the disaster loan uh, application towards the end, unless they've changed the application. It could be that they have, because I assure you in the past three months, everything has been very fluid as far as everything that's going on. But towards the end of the application, there was a line, there is a line in there, there was about, uh, would you be interested in the loan advance of $1,000 per employee up to $10,000 and all you do is check the box. And this is a first come first served opportunity. I have not heard that we have run out of loan funds under the loan advance. Uh, and I don't know if that's gonna happen or when it's gonna happen, but just be aware that you know, it, it could happen if you haven't already applied for a disaster loan. Okay, Rhonda. I, our, 
I, I have a, a question about something you just mentioned. It says up, up to $10,000 advance. That, uh -huh. That's uh, a gift, right? That's not repay it. You, you don't have to pay that back? Yep. You do not have to pay it back. You do not have to report to SBA what you use the money for. Uh, you do not have to ask for it to be forgiven. All you do is fill out that disaster loan application and once the loan officers get to it, they will see how many employees you have reported and then magically one day without email notice or anything, $1,000 per employee will show up in your business account that you have provided on the application and that is yours to use as you see fit for your business. Okay, so Debbie asks, she said she applied for this in early April, and uh -huh. she did hear back in June that okay. uh, she uh, was able to get $25,000, but she said none of that was considered the grant. She, she feels like she didn't get the grant, she just got the loan. Uh, well, my question would be, is she sure she checked that box? And... Uh, like I said, it will just show up in your account. There won't be any notice that that money is coming. It just shows up. And again, I don't know when or if we have already run out of funds in that program. I've not heard that we have run out, but I don't know for certain on that. And can what if you just want the grant? Just all you want is $10,000. You don't even want a loan. Yeah, you can do that. Go ahead and fill out the, the loan application. And then when you get your uh, $1,000 per employee, eventually you will get an email from SBA saying you've been approved for this loan. And at that point, you can log into the portal like it tells you to do in the email. And you can say, no, thank you. I don't want the loan. And, you know, no harm, no foul. You're, you're all good. So for, for, for Debbie, who doesn't think she got the grant, should she be talking to the bank or to SBA or who, who to help her un unravel this? That would be disaster customer service. And later on in the slides, we'll have the contact information. There's an email address and a phone number. And when you call the phone number, I would recommend that you ask for a level two um, customer service representative because we have different levels of customer service and level one is you know your basic triage. That's your, your basic person that can answer some questions, but if you want to get into something more personal like what Debbie is looking at, I would recommend she asks for a level or a tier two person because they are going to be able to probably access the system and, and give her better information than what a, a tier one person will. Okay, because she said she did check the box. She's absolutely 100% okay. certain. Okay, I'll let you keep going here, but these are great questions okay. and thanks everybody. Yes, they are. Okay, our SBA debt relief on working capital, that's kind of a, a twofold thing there. Um, for one, your lender can give you up to six month deferral on principal interest and fees. That's not a problem. If you have an SBA disaster loan from a prior disaster, and normally in Indiana, that's things like a tornado, flood, drought. Uh, like I said, pandemic is highly unusual. This is the first time we've ever had a national disaster declared. Um, but if you have an existing SBA disaster loan, it's automatically put on a six month deferral. So you, you know, you shouldn't have to be making any, mo any monthly payments for six months on that. And if you have an, an existing SBA backed loan, not only can your lender put that on a six month deferral, but SBA is also paying six months worth of your payments. So for six months, you should not have any principal interest or fees or anything associated with that SBA back loan through your lender. If your lender has charged you during part of this time, uh, some of that six months, they can either return that money to you or just tell you, you know, don't pay the, the next six months worth of payments because SBA is covering that for you. Now, if you don't have an SBA loan yet, but you're looking to get a loan and have SBA back it, as long as that loan is approved and fully dispersed, you have you know, the entire loan amount in your account by September 27th of this year, 
then SBA will still pay that six months worth of payments for you. So it's a great time, you know, if you've been kind of thinking about getting a loan, now would be a great time to do it because like I said, we're gonna pay six months worth of payments for you on that. Uh, and of course that's through all of our SBA approved lenders and probably 99% of the lenders in the state of Indiana have been approved by SBA. Okay, Rhonda, if, 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 if the same person owns multiple LLCs, can that same person get multiple loans and grant and all, all of these different things you're talking about? It's per LLC, per legal entity, correct? Correct. Uh, but now if you have, uh, and I can't imagine that this would happen, but if you had say, uh, two LLCs, but you had the same employees doing the same exact job, but they're listed under both LLCs. Yeah, you probably should not try to get a PPP loan for those same uh, employees under two different loans because that would be like double dipping and yeah, right. SB would frown on that. And when you say employees, you're talking about W-2 people, not 1099 people, right? Correct. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now the Paycheck Protection Program or the PPP, just to kind of give you an overview and uh, like Bill mentioned earlier, these are kind of wordy slides. Normally I would not do slides with so much wording except for since they're going to be on SCORE's website and, and Bill's going to send them to you. Um, you know, it gives you additional information so maybe you don't have to take so many crazy notes. So. I did not create these slides. These came out of, out of headquarters and normally I don't make mine so wordy, but like I said, there's so much information. It's probably good to have it in print for you. Now the PPP, we were uh, given $659 billion. We still have money left. And again, like I said, right now the program ends on uh, Tuesday, June 30th. So if you are thinking about it, if you have not done it yet, please check into it as soon as possible because I would hate for you to miss out on this, especially if you, you know, have a need, even if you're just a sole proprietor, you still, I'm sure, pay yourself. You don't volunteer for that business generally. So you want to make sure that you're able to pay yourself. Uh, and this has been, like I said, very fluid. It's, it's changed sometimes almost daily on, on things that are going on. You can see uh, initially, the uh, PPP was open on April 3rd. We ran out of funds on April 16th. It reopened on April 27th. Forgiveness application was released on April 15th. I mean, on May 15th. And then we received additional guidance on May 22nd. And then the Flexibility Act came into law on June 5th. So yeah, right there, we've had a lot of changes. Um, and then a revised loan forgiveness application was released on June 16th. And just yesterday evening, we had some new directions as to, uh, you know, how to handle things like the, you know, who's eligible for the, the PPP, even though it ends soon, as far as we know, we're still looking at things, things come up. Because normally in, in good times, in normal times, when we are bringing out a new loan program, and basically that's what the PPP is, it's a new loan program, we have an entire year to put together this loan program so that we can look at, at everything and think about every situation and make sure that we have answers for, you know, every situation we can think of that will come up and we have all the computer uh, programs in place and, you know, the forms have been approved and the whole nine yards. Normally we have an entire year to do this. These things we've been doing in like 10 days, you know, less than, Less than two weeks, we put together the PPP and everything, and that's why uh, everything has been so fluid. Everything has changed so so often because we run into things and go, "Oh yeah, well, you know, didn't think about that, and that we can have to spend on this." And so that's why sometimes the the rules and regulations with this have changed. I talked to somebody yesterday who was a little concerned because they wanted to file for their loan forgiveness, and their lender seemed to be little hesitant to go ahead and do that and they couldn't understand why well that was because we had just come out with new forms for the forgiveness and the lender was waiting for additional guidance on 
on the forms and you know even at that they could change a little bit more they could be tweaked a little bit more so if you are looking to you know apply for forgiveness right away and your lender seems to be hesitant don't worry it's probably because they're waiting for additional guidance from SBA and going to see if we're going to tweak these forms anymore before they go ahead and apply. Rhonda? So everything, Rhonda. yes sir. Originally the, um, the loan had to be used I think 75% for payroll Correct. and that was changed? That is now 60%. Okay, so 60% is, is, is on your slide here uh, and that's the latest greatest number. That is the latest, greatest number, yes. yes. Okay, and going back to the sole proprietor, a lot of these programs talk about the number of employees. Mm -hmm. The sole proprietor should count him herself as one, even if they are not a W-2 employee? Yep. Okay, yep. good. Yep, yep. Yeah, in, in, in those situations, uh, you know, where you take an owner's draw, maybe you wait until the end of the month and, and see how much money is, you know, left over at that point. And then that's what you take as your, your draw, uh, you know, so you don't have a, a set amount that you take on a biweekly, weekly, monthly basis. Depends on how, you know, the business is going. That's perfectly fine. You know, we'll look at the past year. What did you take over the past year? We'll divide that by 12 and that'll give us an average for what your monthly income is. So, you know, not to worry. Don't think that you're, you're left out. Certainly you're not, um, whether you're a sole proprietor, uh, if you have independent contractors that work for you, please encourage them to apply for the PPP because they can apply as a, a contractor themselves, self-employed persons all qualify, uh, for the PPP, uh, so now the small business does need to meet our size standards and that's either based on the, the type of industry and that can be your number of employees or your annual sales or we could do an alternative size alternative size if you fall outside of that so you know we're still trying to get you in there any way we can and not only are for-profit businesses eligible for this but nonprofit organizations veterans organizations tribal business concerns all of those are, are eligible. Uh, generally, it's 500 employees or less. If you have a, a NAX code that blink, begins with 72, so that would be like your hotels and your restaurants and such, and you have more than one physical location, then it's uh, 500 employees or less per location. So I know when the PPP first came out, you heard a lot about these big franchise restaurants that got all this PPP money and, and that didn't seem to be fair, especially when, when we ran out the first round, it's because they had more than one location and they employed less than 500 people per location. So that's how they were able to apply for the PPP program. But, hey, Rhonda. You know, not to worry. Yes. If you're self-employed uh, and you're a sole proprietor, uh-huh. How do you prove the 60% threshold since, since what you take out of the business is sort of discretionary? Well, what you will do then, like I said, you would figure out uh, based on what your uh, income for last year for 2019, divide that by 12, and that gives us an idea of, of your average monthly income, then you would just write yourself a check or if you have proof that you switched it from your business account to your personal account, like every two weeks, uh, every, you know, every four weeks, however you want to handle it. But as long as you have proof that you took that as your, your pay, then that, that's fine. And, you know, like I said, you can write yourself a, a check um, and put it into your personal account. And that can be proof that, yeah, I did pay myself. This is why we figured out our average uh, income is for the month, and this is what I paid myself for those two two months. The, the yeah. big thing is just showing that you actually paid yourself. Okay. And then what does the PPP provide? Again, it's uh, up to $10 million. Now, if any portion of the loan is not forgiven, 
then it's a five-year term and just a 1% interest rate. But we're hoping that you'll find that, you know, the, the whole thing is forgivable. As long as you retain your employees, uh, you know, pay them regular salary, and at least 60% of the loan proceeds were used for those payroll costs. And those payroll costs include not only, you know, their regular wages, but anything else you normally pay, like um, if money goes to a retirement account, if you have health savings accounts, uh, insurance that you pay for your employees, um, vacation time would be covered, um, everything basically except for federal employee income tax is the only thing that's not covered by the PPP as far as your wage costs. So all of that is covered as far as being part of the wages on that. And originally you had to pay those employees within an eight week period. Well, now they've increased that to 24 weeks. Uh, so you have 24 weeks where you can spread that over instead of trying to cram it into the, the eight weeks right after you get that money. Now you have 24 week period to actually disperse that money to your employees. Now, how do you apply? Uh, well, you go through a participating lending ins institution uh, that, like I said, can be your current business lender, your personal lender, or you can find a different one. And if you go to the sba.gov slash paycheck protection slash find, there should be a little uh, box there that you click on that. You put in, I believe it's your zip code, and then it'll list all the lenders starting from the closest ones to that zip code, you know, all the way across the nation. Now, another idea is you can go to the list of lenders participating in the PPP program by state. It's a big old long list, so you have to scroll down to Indiana, uh, but then you would find things like the, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of some of those oddball places that, like the Lending Tree, um, Oh, and now I can't think of some of the other places. Well, don't don't the micro, aren't the micro lenders also involved? Yes, yes, of course, the micro lenders are also involved. So uh, if you want to use one of our micro lenders for Marion County and the surrounding counties, we have two. We have Bankable, which is up in Anderson with Flagship Enterprise, and then BOI Business Ownership Initiative, which is in the Salesforce Tower and is the host for our Women's Business Center. BOI is our other micro lender that covers this area. But yeah, you can certainly go to the micro lenders um, for the PPP. You can go, like I said, to your regular lender. You can go to those oddball places that you wouldn't normally think of as being lenders like the cabbage and, and uh, the lending tree and such. Those are, and if you're not sure, you know, if you uh, find somebody or you've got an email and it sounds like a, you know, a good deal, but you're not positive because that doesn't sound, you know, like it's right. You can always look on this list or you can call us and, and we can look on the list and see if they're, they've done loans with us already. Uh, now, where can you get more information on all of this? Of course, you can always contact me and on the last slide, it will have my contact information. Or you can go to our webpage at sba.gov slash paycheck protection. That'll take you directly to that one webpage on the, the PPP loans. It'll have frequently asked questions. It'll have all the interim final rules listed. Uh, there's a great thing on there on how to calculate loan amounts. And if English is not your first language, we also have it available in a wide variety of languages now. So there's lots of information on that webpage. Now, six things you need to know right now, uh, approximately $130 billion remains. So please, if you haven't applied for a PPP and you think you could use that money to help keep your business in business, then I would highly recommend you check into it. Uh, just don't forget that Tuesday is the, the uh, end for that. Um, and again, for full PPP loan forgiveness, you have to use at least 60% of the loan for payroll. It used to be 75%, as Bill mentioned earlier, but now it is down to 60%. The other 40%, again, you can use for mortgage interest, rent, 
uh, and utilities. And then also if you have uh, uh, like payments on things that you are purchasing, uh, I believe that's also covered under those additional things that you can use the PPP loan for and still get loan forgiveness. And then if it turns out that, you know, uh, maybe you didn't retain all your employees, uh, maybe you couldn't use that other 40% for the other items that were approved, again, you're, you know, you get five years to pay it back and it's only 1% uh, interest on that. And there's no prepayment penalty. So if you want to pay it off early, that's fine too. Uh, if you want to use more than 60% for payroll, you can do that too. That's perfectly fine. That's completely up to you. Now, once your PPP loan has been approved, the lender has 10 days to get the loan into or get the money into your account. And if they don't do it within the 10 days, then they're in trouble with SBA. But I haven't heard of, of any time yet that that's been a problem. The lender hasn't gotten it to you in time. Uh, and again, the lender must submit the application to SBA by 11.59 p.m. on Tuesday of next week. The covered period is 24 weeks from the loan disbursement or December 31st, whichever is earlier. If your loan was approved before June 5th when we changed it from the eight week to the 24 weeks, then you just need to uh, talk to your lender about going to 24 weeks instead of the eight weeks. But you can stick with the eight week program if you want. You don't have to, it's really up to you. And then the borrower has 10 months after the covered period to submit for loan forgiveness. So don't think as soon as you've you know, used up all that money, you have to run to your lender and apply to get it forgiven. You actually have 10 months after your eight week or 24 week, whatever period you're going with, to ask for loan forgiveness on that. And this is a little video that um, our Small Business Development Center, they're one of our other resource partners, similar to SCORE, but they're not volunteers like our wonderful SCORE mentors, but they put this together on Traders Point Creamery. We'll see, yeah, we can get it to play. I see it, but I don't hear it. You don't hear it? No. No volume. There's no, there's no audio. Okay. Well, that's a shame because it's the, the owner of Trader Sport Creamery telling how um, they actually have three different LLCs that make up the Trader's Point Creamery, the whole thing. And they've applied for loans for each one of the, the different ones, kind of something like we talked about earlier, Bill. Uh, so if you're interested in hearing what he has to say, it's kind of a, you know, a nice thing to hear from somebody else. Unfortunately, uh, it's not going to work for us today. But if you go to YouTube, you'll find it on there. And it may be posted on the Small Business Development Center's website at ISP. BDC for Indiana Small Business Development Center dot org. Is that like embedded? Said, nice is that em video. Hey, Ron, is that embedded in your slides? That video? It is embedded in the slides, yeah. It'll probably work on when they get the slides and oh, they try good. it. Good. Hey, one one more so thing to Rhonda. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm reading these questions as they're coming in. There are a lot of questions about independent contractors. I'm not going to read them all here, but I want, I want to let the listeners know that um, we'll, we'll, we'll go back and revisit that because there's, there's some interesting comments about conf points of confusion, but um, okay. I'll let you keep going. Okay. Yep. We'll have plenty of time at the end to cover everybody's questions, I promise. Okay. All right. Economic inju injury disaster loans or idle loans and they advance. This is directly from SBA. Our disaster loan program is the only time that we do direct loans to our small businesses. And our disaster loan program not only covers, you know, outside of pandemic, uh, not only covers the business owners, but if you have had a, a loss with your home because of a natural disaster, then we cover that too because, you know, you don't always plan for things like a flood, especially if you're not in a flood zone. Uh, so you may not have that flood insurance. 
also we also cover home loans under our disaster loan program. But what we're talking about today is our idle loan or economic injury disaster loans. And those loans are for when you've suffered an economic injury related to a disaster. So maybe you weren't, your business was not directly affected by the disaster. You know, maybe there was a tornado in the area and even though your business was not hit, uh, you know, people couldn't get to your business because there were trees down or, or whatever. And, and so you suffered a, a, a loss uh, in, you know, your income and such, then you could apply for one of these idle loans. And again, like I said before, this is the first time in, in our history at SBA that we've ever had a national disaster declared. Uh, first time it's ever been for a virus, uh, a pandemic. So yeah, we're, we're all in, in uncharted territory here. But our idle loan, uh, we were given an extra $50 billion under the PPP and Healthcare Enhancement Acts to cover our disaster loans. Uh, applications, once they are submitted, or it's supposed to be a first come, first serve basis. That's what I've been told anyway. Um, now, it could be once the loan officer gets to your application that they will need additional information, so they will be contacting you. Uh, could be either a phone call, could be an email. So please do check your email regularly and make sure you also check your spam or your junk folder because I know that sometimes for whatever reason, emails from our disaster center will go into the spam or the junk folder instead of your regular one. Even if you've already received an email from the disaster center into your regular inbox, for some reason, sometimes they go over there. So make sure you check uh, your spam or junk folders too. Now these are low interest rate, long-term working capital loans. The loans are deferred for a year. So if you get a disaster loan, you know, today you have a whole year before you have to start pay, making any payments on it. For uh, for-profit businesses, the interest rate is 3.75%. If you are a nonprofit organization, your interest rate is 2.75%, and that comes with a 30-year maturity. And just like the PPP, uh, you know, if you have a portion of that that you do not uh, get forgiven, or any of our regular SBA loans, there's no prepayment penalty on these. So you you know you're welcome to pay it back if you can pay it back in in two years instead of 30 years. That's great. Uh, but if you need the 30 years, that's fine, too. So it's just a really great program if you are in need. And I, I know a lot of businesses are in need right now. And again, along with that IDA loan comes that advance. And again, that is $1,000 per employee. And then, you know, business owners are included in that number as far as employees, uh, up to $10,000. So if you have 12 employees, including yourself, then unfortunately you're only getting 10,000. You won't get the, you know, the 12,000. And this is just kind of uh, an extra cushion there to try and help you to keep that business in business because the last thing we want to see is for any businesses to go under. And again, don't forget that advance does not have to be repaid. We won't ask for, you know, what you've done with the money, uh, what you plan on doing with the money, uh, none of that. The, the advance okay. does not have to be. Paid. Rhonda, just to clarify one more time, the ten thousand dollars is up to ten thousand dollars. It's one thousand per employee. The right. owner counts as an employee, but right. contract workers do not count as employees. Only W two right. employees. Okay, yes, that's exactly right. Yep. Okay. And again. It if you have contract employees, encourage them to, uh, you know, apply for the PPP. They're eligible for that under the PPP. Right. They, you know, a lot of contractors uh, are listening right now, and they, what, one of the, uh, I've, I've heard this from more than one person, they say that, well, you know, I'm a 1099 employee, but I don't have a business bank account. The checks are made out to me personally. I put it in my personal bank account. So some, some of this, um, documentation is kind of hard to, hard to provide. I, I know some that have actually created uh, or opened another account just for the PPP funds so that 
They make sure that they show that it is for that. Um, you know, talk to your lender and ask them what they would prefer as far as uh, proof as that, you know, you use the money as you did, because really our decision on, you know, forgiveness is going to be based on what the lender turns into us, what the, what the lender says. Good. Thanks. Good points. Uh, under our idle loan in advance, more than 5 million applications have been received. Again, this is the first time we've ever had a, a national disaster. So that's a lot of applications for us uh, to come in. Last I heard, we were processing approximately 800 applications a day. So even at 800 a day, that's still gonna take us a while to get through 5 million. Um, so if you haven't heard back yet, it could be that they just haven't gotten to it yet, unfortunately. Now we are adding more loan officers all the time. In fact, a couple of weeks ago, they asked for um, SBA employees that wanted to volunteer, well, not really volunteer, but go on, on temporary duty with the disaster office uh, to help process loan applications. And two people in our office actually are on detail over to disaster for a month to try and help with the, the backlog of the applications. So when the, the idle loans first came out, uh, all small businesses and nonprofits, like I mentioned earlier, were eligible, but agricultural businesses such as farms were not eligible. But as of May 4th, it was open to ag businesses. Um, and then a couple of weeks ago, it was opened back up to everybody again. So all businesses, as long as you're small, uh, nonprofit, you're all eligible to apply for the idle loan. Uh, the, and again, like I mentioned before, the advance is automatically deposited into your bank account. I've had people call me up and say, hey, I had this $2,000 deposited in my account. Is that all I got on my idle loan was only $2,000? Because I really was looking for more than that. Uh, and no, the, the answer was no. If, if it just showed up and you did not get an email and, and approve <clears throat> the loan and such, that is just your advance. So that's been a little bit of confusion there because I don't think we've been quite uh, clear enough in our, our message whenever you apply for that, that, that that's what's gonna happen with that. If you were an early applicant for the disaster loan and your loan number starts with a two and you have not gotten back in the portal and reapplied, then please do that. When this first started, we were trying to use our normal disaster uh, form and the whole nine yards and it really didn't fit to this unusual situation that we're going through right now and we had so many people apply at one time that the system kept crashing so after a few days uh, open then over the weekend that first weekend the disaster center actually switched systems uh, to a, a much hardier system that could handle that type of of influx of applications. They also streamlined the application. So I promise if you did that early one, which was just horrible and you had to upload all these documents and stuff, not to worry. It's a much simpler application now. It should only take you probably half an hour or so if you have all the information sitting there in front of you. Uh, but make sure that your confirmation number, <clears throat> excuse me, your application number starts with a three if it does, then, then you're good. If it starts with a two, you will need to reapply. And it's supposed to be able to match it up so that you don't really lose your place in line. But again, I don't know. I don't, I don't work in disaster, so I can't swear to it. That's just what I've been told. Now, if you are looking for an update on, on status or if, uh, you know, you've applied and you go, oh, my gosh, you know, you, if you're like a lot of people, you've printed out your application and then you go back and you look at it and you go, oh no, you know, I put in wrong, one wrong number on my account. Or uh, I had a lady just the other day say she had applied and she realized that she typed in her email address wrong. Just contact the disaster customer service and let them know. You can call them at this 800 number. Um, now, don't be surprised if you have a long wait, I would call in at an odd time, either very early in the morning or later in the evening. Um, 
this time of day, it's probably very busy, but you can try, but <clears throat> uh, you're welcome to call the 800 number or disaster customer service at sba.gov is the email address directly to the disaster center. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have access to that system, so I can't look it up. That would be so nice because I could have helped so many more people and be able to look up and say, oh yeah, you know, you, you know, here you are. It looks like, you know, you're about a week out before you get a, an answer back or, or whatever. Unfortunately, yeah, our system isn't set up for that and, and we don't have that capabilities. But contact the Disaster Customer Service and if you absolutely don't get anywhere with that still, you're still welcome to contact me. Uh, I can sometimes send an email to a special email address and ask that this be looked into closer or, you know, this is an unusual situation and, and we need to know how to handle this sort of thing. So on occasion, I can uh, try and, and ask on your behalf, uh, but if it's just really asking about, you know, an application that you filled out last week, then they're probably not going to give me much of a response except that it's in processing. But that, that's our idle loans. Uh, and again, don't forget, if you do have a question, feel free to call the Disaster Customer Service or email them there. Now on the agricultural or rural loans, um, you know, I've had people say, does my business qualify for that? Uh, say you're, you have a, a goat farm and, uh, you know, you make goat cheese and the soap and all that stuff. Yeah, you know, like I said, now it's open to everyone before uh, the agricultural related industries were not eligible. They were not uh, part of the idle loan program that has now been open to everybody. But don't forget if you have a rural or agricultural related business, the USDA uh, continues to be a resource. So please do check them out at usda.gov slash coronavirus. Uh, because you may not realize it, but USDA Rural Development does loans to agricultural businesses. The, the part that SBA doesn't cover, then USDA Rural Development does. So, yeah, check them out, too, if you have a, a rural or agricultural business and see what they have to offer for you. And then SBA programs, uh, our base programs, the stuff that we normally have, we have some new tools available due to the coronavirus under our traditional SBA back lending. Uh, of course, we have our working capital and fisc fixed asset financing. In other words, we're still doing SBA back loans. I've had a few people ask me, hey, are you, know, are you guys doing just a regular loan? Uh, I had somebody the other day uh, say that they had a, applied for a loan. They have a, a restaurant, and of course, with you know the, the dining room being closed for a long time, they had thought about for years about uh, getting a, a food truck and you know, kind of branching out from their restaurant and doing the food truck too, where they got a, a loan that SBA backed and they have that food truck now. And so they've been going out into the neighborhoods and such with their food truck because their dining had been closed. Now I know that's starting to open again, but this was a, an avenue they'd been thinking about for a long time and they went ahead and did that. And actually uh, in, here in Indianapolis, uh, around some of the neighborhoods around where I live, there are food trucks that will come into the neighborhood, which I thought was kind of interesting. Because whenever I think of a, a food truck going some places like downtown where, you know, all the tall buildings are and the businesses and such, or maybe at a big event, you'll have a food truck. But they were actually going into the neighborhoods on, you know, and they would pick a, a, a housing addition or neighborhood or whatever on a certain day of the week, and they would go to that neighborhood, which I thought was kind of cool because, you know, people were working from home now. They weren't necessarily downtown working and stuff. So I thought that was kind of a, a cool idea that they, they did that. But yes, we are still doing SBA back loans all the time. And again, don't forget, if you get an SBA back loan and it is funded before or by September 27th, we'll make the first six months worth of payments on that loan. Um, and that's part of that SBA debt relief, uh, the September 27th date there, automatic six month deferral on your, your loans. Now, that is something that the, the lender can offer you. So you could get six months worth of payments made by SBA and then get a six month deferral where you don't have to make any payments from your lender. So it's possible that you wouldn't have to worry about any payments with this loan 
for a, an entire year. And then our Express Bridge Loan Program. This is a pilot loan program that came out before the PPP came along uh, to try and get some money faster into your hands because we had such an uh, overflow of, of applications come in for the idle loan for the disaster loan we came up with this little bridge loan where you could go to your lender and get a, a fast loan of up to twenty five thousand dollars to try and and you know fill in that time until your disaster loan came through and those are still available uh, the idea is that you get that bridge loan from your lender and then once your idle loan your disaster loan is approved then you can go back and pay your lender back that money that you got for the bridge loan. And then we also have express loans that are available up to $1 million. And an express loan means that it's less paperwork for you and the lender, and it's a faster turnaround time on an answer from SBA. Generally with an express loan, the lender can expect an answer back from SBA within 24 hours. Um, because we, like I said, you know, it's, it's kind of a, a simplified loan process and it's only up to a million dollars where normally we do five million and then of course we always have our business advising and mentoring like SCORE, um, the small business development center we have all of those around the state of indiana the same as we do our score and then we have two women's business centers one here in indianapolis and one up in fort wayne the fort wayne covers the the northeast corner of the state and down i-69 until they run into uh, Marion County and the surrounding counties that our, our Women's Business Center here covers. But they all three are great for information. In fact, I highly recommend that people talk to all three of them because the more brains you pick, the more information you're going to get. And like Bill said, with our score, we have like 80 mentors there. So there's such a, a huge amount of information and expertise there that you can draw from. So it's just a, a great service that SBA is able to provide through our great resource partners. They are all partially funded by SBA and their uh, counseling services are all free. Uh, of course, I think everybody is still doing everything pretty well remotely right now. So that's through things like Zoom here or over the phone through email. But still, it's, it's a great, great opportunity for you to talk to somebody who who's been there and done that and, and get the expertise and the help that you need. And like I said, they're partially funded by SBA. So look at it as a return on your federal tax dollars. So please do make use of them. And they have online training. I know a, a couple of our resource partners in other parts of the state are, are starting to do in-person training now. Uh, so they're there to help you. And if, you know, if you're not sure who uh, is available or around besides, of course, our, our wonderful SCORE, obviously you know how to get in contact with SCORE, but if you are looking for elsewhere, you can always go to our website at sba.gov slash local dash assistance uh, for additional information on who's in your area, or you can always contact our office or contact me directly and, and I'll be glad to tell you who's in your area and, and what their contact information is. So that's basically the information I have for you today. Uh, don't forget to visit our website at sba.gov slash coronavirus relief. That will take you to directly to the web page that covers all of the different things that we've talked about today. Again, my name is Rhonda. That's my work cell number there. You're welcome to call it at any time. Don't worry if you think of something, you know, it, at an odd hour or you, you think, you know, nine o'clock at night is not an appropriate time to be calling my cell, don't worry about it. Call my cell, leave me a voicemail when I am off duty, the phone goes off and it doesn't turn back on until I'm back on duty at work. And again, you're always welcome to send me an email. Just don't put an H in my first name because it won't get to me. Unfortunately, somebody tried to send me an email the other day and forgot to put an H in my first name. And, so I didn't get the email, but thankfully they did call me and, and so we got everything taken care of. So that's what I have for you now. What questions do you guys have for me? Okay, so th thank you, Rhonda. That, that was great, a lot of good information. And um, we, get, we got uh, a good half hour here to go over some questions and we, we have a backlog of questions. I'm going to kind of go from the newest ones backwards because some of the ones that were asked initially got answered as you went through the presentation. Um, okay. So um, 
Jonathan wants to know, in all of this mix here, are, are there any inventory-backed loans? Is that, is that relevant to, to think about? Uh, if you need a loan to purchase inventory, you can always, like I said, get an SBA back loan uh, and you can use it for that. Now, your, if you apply for the idle loan, the disaster loan, you can use that for anything and everything you need to keep your business in business. Um, with okay. the idle loan, I was just going to say with the idle loan and the PPP, just make sure you use it for business costs and not not for buying that sports car you've had your eye on. Okay. Jay asks uh, about clarification, not for profits. Do, do they uh, fit in here somewhere and, and um, anything unique or different for not for profits? Not for profits actually uh, qualify for both the, the disaster loan and the PPP loan. Uh, and really the only difference between, um, you know, being a for-profit and a non-profit is that under the disaster loan, your interest rate is 1% lower. It's 2.75% than for for-profit businesses. Okay, great. And Joel said that he did apply for the PPP and it was approved under the eight-week time frame. Can he go back or should he go back and amend it? so that he comes under the 24 week time frame. Yeah, you're, you're welcome to contact your lender and, and say, you know, you uh, were approved while it was still under the eight week, but you would like to switch over to the 24 week and that should not be a problem. And if your lender has a, a problem or they're not sure about that, encourage them to contact either our lender relations specialist that they normally work with, or if they, you know, don't have, uh, you know, necessarily a relationship with somebody in our office, have them just call our office and we will be glad to take care of any questions that they have. Good. And Tim, uh, one of our SCORE mentors, uh, he, he's uh, putting out a hypothetical here. You um, are in the 24-week program, but you've used up your funds in 12 weeks. Uh, at that point, are you ready to go ahead and file for forgiveness? Sure, if you want to. It, it just, when we had that eight week parameter, it seemed like it was kind of tight for some people. So that's how come the agency came back and, and revised that to a, a longer time period, the 24 weeks. But no, you don't have to wait till the end of the 24 weeks. Once you've dispersed all the, the funds for the wages, uh, you know, and, and you spend it on the other things, your rent or uh, utilities or whatever, then yeah, you're, you're welcome to ask for forgiveness at any time. Good. And then um, Sally said that she, she ha hadn't heard about micro lenders. Could you say a little bit more about who they are, what they are, how they operate? Sure. Our micro lenders are nonprofit organizations that do our microloan program. And the microloan program are smaller loans. Um, when it first came out, they called them uh, loans for uh, unbakeable businesses. And I didn't like to use that term because I didn't think that sounded, you know, very nice, basically. But those are for um, smaller businesses or maybe you need a smaller amount and maybe you're not grown enough that, you know, your usual lender is interested in doing a loan, they want to give you a, you know, a 15 or 20 percent interest credit card when you're asking for five or ten thousand dollars or twenty five thousand dollars. So that's where the micro loan come about, um, was to cover those smaller loans. And those are loans of fifty thousand dollars or less. And like I said, we have micro lenders around the state that cover that for us. Again, BOI, Business Ownership Initiative in Indianapolis, covers Marion County and the surrounding counties, and then Bankable, which is with flagship enterprise up in Anderson, they cover like the middle one third of the state of Indiana as far as micro loans. And they are not your traditional lender, so they can be a little bit more lenient, a little bit more flexible on, on things as to, um, you know, collateral that they take, or if it's small enough, they won't take any collateral. 
I know BOI before uh, worked with a guy. I don't remember now if he, he must have actually built the guitars. And that's something that we normally would not necessarily take as collateral under our usual SBA BAPT loan. But under the micro loan program, BOI did take guitars as some of the collateral for his loan. Um, so yeah, they can be a little bit more flexible. So the micro loan program is a, a great program if you're looking for $50,000 or less, or if you are looking for funds under the PPP currently. Great. Now, I, I know I'm going to run across a number of questions about independent contractors. Um, and I think you've covered them pretty well, but I want to just read this one uh, word by word just to make sure we got it straight. It's from Thomas. Okay. It, it says, independent contractors are asking how to document their use of the PPP funds, but they don't have a business account, and the funds were deposited in their personal account since the 1099s were to them personally. How do they document the pay to themselves? Well, again, I know some people have created a separate account just to hold those PPP funds so that they could, could transfer it from that account to their regular account, like every two weeks, every four weeks, once a month, whatever it works, so that they can go back to the lender and show, hey, this is where I, I did it. This is how I paid myself. Um, I know others, when they have it in a separate account, write themselves a check. Um, you would probably be best just to ask your lender what they're looking for as far as proof that you use this for, you know, your your wages, your payroll. Um, right, because be the lender that you're talking to is the same person that has to kind of audit you at the end to make sure that you've yeah. done it right. So so they yeah. can have they can say, well, here's how we're going to do it. Here's what you give us, and this is what we'll accept. Yep, right. Yep. Yep. And you know, they may say you're an independent contractor. We know all you have is your personal account. You don't have a business account with us or a separate account. So we're going to assume that, you know, you've used all this money to, to pay yourself that that's, you know, where it's gone to. So you're fine. Okay. But yeah, check, check with your lender to see what they, they want. All right. And I, I think we've kind of talked about this too, but Roger says, how does this apply to a single employee LLC who does contract work on a 1099? Huh. It's kind of a double, double entity there. Well, if you are, say you're a small business and you have uh, one employee, if I'm understanding this right, if you have one employee who is a 1099 employee, I'm assuming that you take an owner's draw, a regular paycheck, whatever, for yourself as the owner, and then your 1099 employee can apply separately. So you can apply for yourself, and then your 1099 employee can apply for themselves. So you would, would actually, there would actually be two loans there uh, for those two different people or you know if it's just you you're a, uh, an independent contractor you know again you can apply for yourself yeah I, I can interpret this two ways I think maybe this person is an independent contractor but is operating inside his own little LLC but the, the but it, it's it's all relates to the fact that it's single owner sole proprietor and 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 that's the business essentially yep. yeah okay. no, that that's fine we we don't have a, a you know a minimum number of of employees or anything there's got to be at least one so because there's got to at least be an owner you know something there uh, but no you know one it one is fine whether you're uh, self-employed you're a contractor so proprietorship whatever you are Okay, um, I have a question here that says, I applied for a PPP and got a little bit in May, and then I applied for a disaster loan yesterday. Do I qualify to get the disaster loan even though I got a little PPP money? And how do I know whether the disaster loan is gonna be approved or not? 
Uh, well, as far as the disaster loan being approved, uh, this is a loan, so you do need to have at least decent credit. I, you know, don't have a, a special number that we go by, um, but you do need to be able to show some sort of repayment ability, as I understand. Um, and then as far as do you qualify, sure. The only thing is you cannot use the PPP loan for the exact same thing that you use the EIDL loan for, but I'm sure you've probably already used that PPP money or you will by the time you get that EIDL loan. So as long as you're not trying to pay the wages or the same people, the same stuff with both loans, then you're perfectly fine. And the disaster loan can be used for anything to keep your business in business. Now, don't use it to take, uh, you know, a big vacation somewhere, uh, to buy a fancy sports car, put a down payment on a new house. There have actually, believe it or not, already been people who have tried that and they have already gotten caught and they are looking at some uh, serious prison time for that sort of thing. But it, as long as you're, you know, using the PPP for what you're supposed to and then your disaster loan for anything else. And, you know, once you're out of that eight week period with your, or however many weeks you take to cover the wages with your PPP, as long as you don't use that idle loan to cover wages for that same period, you can use it for anything, including wages at, at a different time. Whatever you need to do to keep your business in business, buy supplies, inventory, whatever it is, that's what the disaster loan is for. Okay, and when we were talking about who's making these loans, Dan said PayPal and Veeam, V-E-E-M, are doing PPP loans. Don't, don't yeah. know if that's right or wrong, but I'm sharing the information that he put up there. Um, I know I've heard of PayPal. I've not heard of Veeam before, but that doesn't mean that, that yeah, they've not been approved because there's a lot of them that I haven't heard of necessarily that, that are approved. And Brianna just put in square.com. I don't, I, I, I think that it just says square.com. So maybe they might be making these loans or not. I don't know. I'm just passing this along. Yeah, um, Square is another one of those oddball ones that, that has been approved for PPP. There, okay, good. So uh, Brianna, good recommendation there. Um, All right, uh, we've answered a number of these. I'll read this one out loud from Sally. How does EIDL and PPP interface with the current unemployment uh, benefits being offered to individuals who are 1099s or self-employed? <laughs> That's a good question. If you are self-employed, 1099, and you're receiving unemployment, you cannot get a PPP loan also because that's kind of double dipping. Now you're talking the state and the federal government. Uh, so it would probably be possible that you could do both, but you could also get caught and wind up having your room and board paid for by the federal government in the way of uh, federal prison. So I wouldn't recommend that you draw unemployment and apply for a PPP for the same time period. Okay. And then um, again, to the sole proprietor who is being hurt definitely by COVID-19, um, mm -hmm. but didn't have any income in 2019. It was early in the startup period. So they're having more losses, not less income. How, how does that all fit in? Yeah, unfortunately, if you can't show that you took a, an owner's draw in 2019 at all, uh, and I have run into the situation once where they, they started towards the end of 2019 and they, you know, were just starting up the business and hadn't taken an owner's draw yet, so they can't show what their wages were for that time because, you know, self-proprietorship and they hadn't taken anything at that point. Uh, so unfortunately, the PPP probably will not work for you, but there you still have the disaster loan program. You can still get a, a micro loan. Visit our micro lenders and, and see about getting some working capital through the micro loan program. Uh, 
uh, or talk to your lender and, and get an SBA back loan through that. And if you get the, the micro loan, again, don't forget that falls under that six month period that SBA will pay the first six months of uh, payments for you. The, you know, it's not only the, the ones, our regular lender back loans, it's also the, the micro loans that fall under that six month payment. Okay. Th this, is a, <laughs> this is complicated here. Um, an LLC with partners, not a single owner LLC, but an LLC with partners who are um, each getting K-1s. Um, and concerning the idle program, uh, how, how, do the, how does the grant portion of that work with respect to the various partners? And, I'm, and I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't know the answer to this, but I thought I'd, I'd, I'd throw it out here anyhow. But even though, you know, you're partners and you wouldn't consider yourself employees, uh, you still draw wages from the business. So when you apply for the idle, if there are say three partners and, and you don't have any other employees, then when it says how many employees you put down, or I don't remember if there's a spot that asks for how many partners specifically, there probably is, but the, the number should be three. You know, say you have three partners, but you don't have any employees outside of, of these three partners, then you should be approved for $3,000 under the loan advance if we still have funds available because there's three of you. Okay, so, so go over this one more time because it sounds too good to be true. You can get, uh, according to what we said here, you can get a $10,000 gift from Uncle Sam for applying for a loan, but you, at the last minute you say, never mind the loan, just send me my gift. Is that right? That's correct. It, that is pretty much right. It's up to ten thousand dollars it's a thousand dollars per employee up to ten thousand dollars and yeah you know if you decide that you don't want the loan after all you just want that you know thousand dollars per employee you are welcome to do that so that 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 sounds like if someone sat here for an hour and listened to this and they go ahead and do that it was well worth their time yes yes and if you haven't applied for the ppp yet I highly recommend that you do that. You have until Tuesday. Um, and again, I don't know if it will be extended or not, but I know we have plenty of funds left. So please go ahead and, and apply for it if you haven't done that yet. And, and you know, you could benefit from that. Right, right. So um, I'm gonna s go down to the bottom here and go back. Um, what is the deadline for idle? Uh, I believe the deadline for that is December 31st for this particular uh, disaster, the pandemic. Debbie uh, asks, is there a micro lender specifically for women owned businesses? Not specifically. Uh, all of our micro lenders serve everybody equally, but I will say BOI, Business Ownership Initiative, is the host for our Central Indiana Women's Business Center you're in Indy, uh, so, you know, if you want to look at it that way, that's a, a good place to go. But Bankable up in Anderson is really great, too. They're a very active uh, micro lender. But, yeah, I'm, you know, I think BOI is fantastic, too. Okay. Where on the SBA website specifically can you find the application for the IDL? It will be under the... Uh, sba.gov slash coronavirus relief and then there will be an icon there that you can click on for idle because if i tried to get you to the idle loan directly i might give you the wrong web page but if you go to the, the coronavirus relief web page and then you just click on the icon that says idle it'll take you right to that specific web page and then you can apply on there now if you want to go the long route you could go to our national website, go to the disaster loans, and then you have to find the one for the coronavirus. But I would just go to coronavirus relief myself. That, that's going to get you there faster. Okay. And Dan says that he went to another webinar on the same subject, and he was told to submit multiple applications for PPP. 
And once you get approved by one, then you can back off on the other ones. Is this a good strategy? No. I don't know who told you that, but that is not a good strategy. Because uh, with SBA system, with any loan that we back, whether it's the PPP or it's one of our regular loans like the, the 7A, um, if our system detects that there's more than one application for the same business, all processing stops, all lenders are contacted and told we have multiple applications for this one business, you know, get with your client and figure out who is going to do this one because we won't process multiple applications. It will stop all processing so that, yeah, that's not a good idea. Yeah, you can talk to multiple lenders and, you know, but once you decide, you know, which one you want to go with, then you go with just that one. I, I would not go with multiple ones. You can talk to multiple, but, you know, I wouldn't apply with multiple. That was the last question. And okay, great. I am really pleased with this webinar. We've, we've had a lot of people join us. Most of them stuck with us to the end. We've had terrific questions. Uh, the, only, the only thing, uh, if you put your question in the chat box, I'm sorry it went nowhere because we were using the Q&A, but maybe someone else answered your, your chat question. I, I, I'm just not monitoring that. But I do appreciate this, Rhonda, and also uh, thank you for the uh, good words about SCORE. Um, and we do have mentors very interested in helping people with these programs. And uh, our website is indianapolis.score.org, and you can uh, sign up for mentoring, free mentoring on that website. So um, we will follow up with an email to the people who have attended, they get a copy of the slides, and um, also, we're going to be uh, hoping to get people to respond to a feedback questionnaire uh, concerning their impressions of this webinar. So please look for that and return that. But uh, thank you, Rhonda. Thank you for making yourself available, giving us your uh, phone numbers and contact information. And uh, with that, um, we're ending the webinar. Okay. Thank you, Bill.